Right, I'm supposed to do, uh, right, uh, sure. One, two, three. episode and I pretty much hated all of them I hated I hated all of them I hated yeah no I hated all of them I could I think I could sufficiently say that the only thing that happened in this episode that I did not hate was Lydia punching Parrish to get him to not think I think that that was pretty much the only safe moment of this entire episode and the rest just made me want to punch something in the face. Yeah, I think that's probably, that's probably about it. I mean, there's no point building up to anything. Um, Theo, let's just right out the gate. Um, you still have a very pretty face and I maintain that you are, you've really earned your paycheck. You've really, you've topped yourself. You've shown your true understanding of other people and what they will do and how to get them to do what you want them to do. And I hated every goddamn second of it. I hated it so much. So there was the thing with Scott, um, your conversation with him. And I hate, the thing that gets me about Theo is that he knows what he has to say. He knows, and th th there's no luck there. He is the master of the web. He knows exactly what string to pull and how far to pull it and what direction to pull it and what he has to pepper in along the way to, you have to talk to Styles. you have to talk to Styles. I don't think this is the place that you want to start telling people, you have to talk to each other, you, I shouldn't be telling you this, I should have told you right away. Oh look, he knows all of the little lines that you should say, that you would say if you were innocent, but you're not innocent and you suck. I went into this, okay, like, I went into this obviously knowing that Scott wasn't, there was going to be that face-off with Styles. I went into it knowing that. And I was so ready to be like, Scott, you need to believe in the kind of person that Styles is. But I think the way that I see it happening is just like, he sees the Styles that we got sort of in 3B. He sees the Styles that's been like, throughout the entire show been like, can you just think of di killing them for me? And we all know that, that was a joking Styles, a Styles who didn't truly understand like the full weight of death. And that's what he thinks it is all along the way. And that's what we know it is along the way. But then you get here and you question yourself and you're like, what wouldn't Styles do for his dad? And that's where Scott's coming from. So I can't hate Scott. I obviously don't hate Styles, which leads me to, I have to just hate Theo, which I do, but I still have such amazing respect for the way that he's being crafted. So to the writers, you're beautiful for creating such a paragon of villainy and it's just marvelous and you've smacked a beautiful face on it and um, thank you for bringing this terrible person into my life. I do not think he can be redeemed, but I'm gonna enjoy watching him mess everything up and destroy everything my heart holds dear while he's with us. I think the scene that really got me that I had no clue was coming was Theo's scene with the sheriff. Because that's the scene where you really get, and I have to hope that that's going to be where it comes back to bite him, because Theo was smart enough to know that he could turn Scott against Styles, but couldn't turn the sheriff against him. And he said Styles wasn't there. And that's what threw me. I was like, oh shit, you're not also going to stick, you're not going to stick to the same story. You're, 
just designing little stories for everyone that have enough consistencies so that if you talk about it really vaguely, because obviously no one wants to talk about that in depth because that's a horrible thing and nobody wants to think about how Donovan died and whether or not Theo or Styles was involved. So from a social standpoint, no one's ever gonna sit down and talk about the dirty details of it because that's super uncomfortable. And he knows that, so he knows that he can get away with it, but we can't let him get away with it. How will he not get away with it? Nyah! And then the Sheriff was just a compassionate person and it killed my heart. And then we got the shot of Theo kind of back being like, ha, ah, it worked. And I'm like, no, I And then there was the little spin that Theo put on the end with Liam. He was like, oh, well, we can't do that. And then Liam gets to think that it was his own idea where he was like, but Scott can. Scott should bite Hayden. Now, here's my question. Why not? I'm probably gonna have to wait until the finale to hear Scott's, Scott's mental process of why he's saying we shouldn't bite Hayden. But at this point, I, as an honorary PAC member and viewer of the show, cannot see any reason why biting her would be a bad idea. It could kill her. There's always that option, but she's clearly already dying of mercury poisoning, and trust me, I have done my research on mercury poisoning, and there is no easy way out of that situation. You're fucked. I, I honestly can't even conceptualize why Scott would do that. He probably has his reasons, I'm sure it will be explained next week, but as of this moment, I'm just sitting here going, where did Scott McCall Let's Save Everyone go? I mean, you know who's taking the body, so you don't need her as bait for that. The doctors were already there, so you don't need her as bait for the doctors. So what, what am I missing? Please, please fill me in, Scott, because I want to vomit and I am so afraid for you. And your asthma that won't go away, which is obviously going to flare up next week because the episode title is going to make me die inside. Parrish knows now. Parrish knows that he's doing something. Um, uh, we have heard a lot of great theories, um, and we will probably get to hear more great theories. I don't know if we're finding out on Monday. I want to say we're finding out on Monday, but also, like, if we were finding out on Monday, that would be easy, and uh, I feel like nothing will be easy. So it's either going to be the only answer we get on Monday, or it's going to be another like four to six months of fandom researching uh, to find something that links Parrish to fire, the supernatural, and also the underworld, uh, or death, or rebirth, or something. There's a lot of different countries of origin for mythological creatures, believe it or not, so you could probably spend your entire life trying to figure out what Parrish was, and we wouldn't be able to figure it out. And that's what Jeff's counting on, so thanks. Malia was around for a little bit. <laughs> Her storyline wasn't that glaringly important to the episode today, but I don't like that Scott was like, don't worry about Malia, because, you know, there's the whole thing about how Styles and Malia are actually dating, and it's not just a pack thing. I love the progress of Malia not wanting any more dead bodies. That was completely heartbreaking and obviously gonna wedge a knife between her and Styles. What I want to talk about with Malia's storyline is like this infinitesimal thing, is that we see her looking through pictures because she's now trying to, she's back on the desert wolf trail because of the memory that the doctors brought up. But the pictures that she has for the desert wolf, like I said, we were discussing this, like the picture of all the dead bodies that Styles says Brayden sent, like it shows people with slash marks. So like, I need to know why the Desert Wolf, presumably she is a shifter, unless she went there and it was like, oh, this is the carnage that the Desert Wolf left behind, but like, she was killing someone that did that carnage, but like, what is implied is that she is a shifter. So she cannot be just like, a shifter that kills other shifters? I mean, like, I guess you could, but that'd be super hypocritical, that would suck. So I can't yet see the logic I can't see the logic in most of this. The only person I can see logic in is Theo, and that's really pissing me off because I want to see 
logic in someone besides the villain, otherwise I start cherishing that storyline because it makes sense to me. But I don't have enough answers to like cohesively talk about anything else. It was really distressing. So I don't know if her hatred for her own daughter comes out of the fact that Malia is a shifter, out of the fact that Malia was born of Peter Hale. I just, I don't know. Um, and I hope we find out, but I doubt we're gonna have enough time to find out next week because Styles is going to punch Theo a lot and Lydia has to get checked into Eichenhaus and Malia has to get cornered by the Desert Wolf, presumably because Lydia saw that in her memory in the first episode of this season. Uh, and then Liam and Scott are going to presumably fight to the near death and I'm gonna hate myself inside. Uh, so there's a lot of things that need to be resolved uh, and we've got roughly 40 to 50 minutes to do it in. Um, so no, none of those None of those things are gonna get answered. There's just gonna be more, more crying, more threats of vomiting tears, um, and a lot of nausea as my heart breaks into thousands of pieces. I think that's about it. So this has been Basically Banshees, and that's basically it. Omega Howl out.